Hello there good people, what is up? Welcome to this channel, my name is Marco and I'm here to share and vlog some of my experiences as a self-taught full-start developer and possibly help you becoming a developer and turn your career into something much much bigger. This is an episode of my milestone project series and in particular today I am gonna develop, I'm gonna build an API. As a matter of fact this is episode 2 of building an API I already done it in uh, with JavaScript. If you didn't watch it, make sure to check it out. But today I'm gonna attempt and build the same exact API, but using Python and in particular, I'm gonna use Flask. If you don't know what an API is, well then make sure to check this video where I explain it in a human friendly way so that it is more accessible for, for everyone. Now, what API am I going to build? I want to help my friend to become a huge star in the US. Now he's a rapper. But he is not a native speaker, so he might have some problem with the lyrics and, and rhymes and stuff. My API would be extremely basic, but it would give you, or would give him, the possibility to check the words, depending on their ending to, for rhymes, or even their start. And I'm gonna separate them in four categories. So basically nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Honestly, I hope that this work can be useful for him to become a huge star. And also, I hope that you can learn something from, from this video, from this project. And believe me, building an API is something very fun, very easy when you do it for easy stuff or easier stuff, but it is a must have on your portfolio. Now, first step, let's open up PyCharm and start creating our project. All right, so I have PyCharm open right in front of me and I am in this folder which is an empty folder for now. Okay, so let's take a look at the Flask documentation. So actually build um, a basic uh, application, web application. So in the installation, what I can do is create a virtual environment. So I need to create an environment, make a directory, then inside that directory, I run this code. So let's try that. I am inside this directory, I go to the terminal and I just run this, I don't want to call it VMV, I can call it API.VMV, no, API VMV. Okay, so inside here, now I should have my virtual environment, API VMV. Let's see what's, what's the next step, it's to activate it and I need to run this command now. Of course, I call it API VMV. And of course, because I need to do like this. Perfect. So right now, if I can see this, it means that I am in this virtual environment. The next step and even the last one is to install Flask with a capital F. This is what I'm gonna do, but I'm going to put pip3 because I do have it and it should install it. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's clear the screen. Okay, so let's create a new Python file, which I'm gonna call server.py. Okay, now in this file, I have to import Flask. But actually, I'm going to do like this. From Flask, I'm going to import Flask. Then I need request. This particular object allows me, this particular method allows me to basically um, get access to the request object when somebody makes a request. So basically reading the arguments and uh, all that good stuff. And last but not least, I need JSONify. And JSONify allows me to basically return a JSON object uh, from the request. And also I need to import the regular expression library so that I can use a regular expression. So let's create a boilerplate web application with Flask. All you do is you initialize it like this and you give it a name, which usually it's like this. 
Then you provide a route. You specify the 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 URL, the endpoint, which in this going in this case is going to be slash. And this actually has to be a decorator like this. After this decorator, I need a function. And this function for now is going to be my own view. It doesn't take any arguments. And in this home view, I'm just going to return um, some HTML. So I just put an H1, which is a low there. Perfect. Yeah, Patreon tells me that spacing is not correct. At the end of everything, I need to specify that if name is equal to main, then I need to run the app. So this is a boilerplate application in using Flask. Now I need to test it. Let's test if this works. From the terminal, what I can do is actually run this. Python 3, I called it server.py. And okay, so port 5000. If I go to localhost port 5000, let's see what I get. Perfect, it works. So this is an H1, it's a heading, it's a low there. This server is working. So now I can start working on my routes. Now, what I want to do is having four routes, one for the nouns and for verbs, adverbs and adjectives. And as for all routes, I need to just put a route right here. And in the URL, I'm going to specify the API v1, so version one. And this is going to be the noun view, so nouns. And I can call it noun views just like this. Perfect. Now I need to return something from this. Okay, first of all, I want to get access to the arguments in the query, uh, in the query parameters of, of the URL. So I can do that thanks to the request object in the args, then get, and I say get the start uh, parameter. The end parameter works exactly like this get but this time it's end now there might be cases where I don't have neither a start or an end and this will throw a problem this will throw an error so what I can do is actually put an if if else statement on one line which goes like this I just copy this whole thing and put it here else an empty string this tells me that um, I am going to take the start argument if there is one, otherwise the star will just going to be an empty string. And I will do the exact same thing with the end parameter. Perfect. Okay. Now I want a regular expression. And this regular expression is going, is going to be compiled by the regular expression module, so that I can use actually a string concatenation uh, for, for the entire regular expression. So what I want to do is, first of all, I want to tell it the caret symbol, which stands for it starts with something. Then I'm going to give it a start. Then I'm going to give it all the letters, either capital or lowercase, zero or plus time plus the end, plus dollar sign. And the dollar sign means it ends with something. Now, if I don't have a start nor an end, this regular expression is going to be, it starts with any number of letters and it ends with any number of letters, which basically is all the words in, in, my, in my vocabulary. Otherwise, if I have an end, but not a start, what this regular expression will say is it starts with any number of letters and it ends with this. So it is exactly what I want. Now what I can do is having a matches variable 
that is going to filter out a particular list. Now, the filter method works like this. You need to provide a function, and in this case, I will use the match function. And then I need to have an iterable where the filter method would be run through. And in this case, I'm going to have my nouns um, list. Now, it's giving me an error right here because I still haven't created the nouns array, but I'm going to do it soon. Now, what's the problem with this? The filter method returns a filter object, which is an iterator. And this is not what I want. Now, an iterator is different from an iterable. I'm not going to explain how, but I have to transform, to turn this into an iterable, into list, a tuple, or whatever. And to do so in Python is extremely easy. You just put a list in front of everything. Now the return of this will be a list, which is exactly what I want. Because now in the return, I can just put a JSONify and I'm gonna have a matches key, which is going to be the matches. And I'm going to have a count as well, which is going to be the length of these matches. Beautiful. Now this view, the logic for this view will be basically identical for all the, the other routes. So I can just take this and copy paste. One, two, and three. Of course, the only thing that's going to change is that in the verbs route, I'm going to loop over the verbs list. In the adjective, Z, I'm going to loop over the adjectives. And in the adverbs, I'm going to loop over the adverbs. And also, I need to remember and change this number, or it will throw an error anyway. So this is the adjective views, and this is going to be the verb. Perfect. And now I need to create this list. So first of all, I need basically words. I need nouns, I need verbs. And what I found is actually on this website, and I will leave the link in the description, I can have a TXT file with 28,000 adjectives, 30,000 verbs. I mean, it's really a lot. I think you get the gist, it's a lot. So if you download the zip file and unzip it, and then you can save it, you can basically have uh, a TXT file with as many nouns as you want, as many verbs. Inside this folder now, I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm going to call vocabulary. Okay. And in this vocabulary, I'm actually going to copy paste something that I've already downloaded previously. Let's see if it works like this. Yep. Perfect. So now in this uh, folder, I have the adjective, the adverse, and if I open one, you can see that it is like this, which is extremely convenient because basically what a text is when you open it in Python is a very long string. But here I can use the split method to transform this into an array because what I want ultimately is a list. And I can use every new line to to do the split so that I can split this huge string into an array. How do I do it? Let's try. What I like to do is always to provide a helper function. And in this helper function, I can call it open file. Yep. Open file and I'm just gonna give it the file. Now in this open file, I will open a particular path and sure it's going to be vocabulary, which in, is in here. And then it's going to have basically the file that I provided. And this is going to be uh, 
text. Then what I have to do is basically the words, it's just going to be the text that read. Okay. What now? Well, I want to return words dot split and I'm going to split on a new line. Now what this method should do is basically should return basically should return whatever file I put in here uh, transform into an array of words. Let's see if this works. If I provide some global variables for example Remember, comment your code is always extremely uh, efficient, so you should always do it. I'm just going to nouns, open file, and this is called nouns.txt. Okay. Why did you do like this? Oh, okay. Nouns.txt. Perfect. So right now I want to print nouns. Let's say the first 10 records, why not? So let's look at the terminal, which is still running, which is good. I stop it and I run it again, and it actually gives me this, which is exactly what I want. 10 of the first words, a bomb, a bombs, perfectly. So. It works. I can basically copy this for the verbs, the adjectives, and the adverbs. Of course, this is going to be different adjectives and adverbs. Yeah, adverbs. The, te the file will change. Verbs. Did I call it adjectives? Yeah adjectives and this is the adverbs perfect so now everything should work as expected because when I make a request to this route for example uh, I will filter to the list thanks to this regular expression let's see Ultimately, if it works, I'm going to run it again because I made some changes. I'm going to go on my local host. I'm going to try to the API v1 nouns this time. In the query, I'm going to put a start of th and an end of, I don't know, r. Wow. All right. Well, okay, it gives me. 36 matches and as you can see here it starts with th and it ends with an r theater theologizer well this is not this doesn't make a good song but thriller this does thriver thrower thrummer uh, this is too complex but again it works it works fine let's now i'm curious what if I just make a request to this route without any query parameters. What happens is, yes, what happens is exactly this. It basically it returns the entire list, which in my opinion makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because if you make a request to this route without any parameter, you get the entire list. And if you want to filter it, well then you provide the start or the end, etc. Now. You might not want this, and I have two solutions for this. One is basically, if somebody makes a request to the route without either the start parameter or the end parameter, you throw an error, you throw an exception, and you return like a status quo, like 400, bad request, or uh, whatever you, you, you see fit. But you could also, now that was the adverbs. If I go to the adverbs, you could also do something like this, which is provide a limit, okay? And it's going to go in the request as well. This time, I'm going to specify another thing, which is a default. And let's put a default of 100. Now, all this can be read as this value 
is going to be taken only if there is a limit parameter. Otherwise, just give it 100. And then what I can do right here, I can slice it. It's very easy in Python. You don't need to R code it. Uh, you just put the limit. This basically means from the start, but you can also do it like this, 0, 2. This will give me just some of the result. Now let's see if this works. I of course need to restart this because I made some, some changes. Let's go back and make a request to this without any parameters. Let's see what it does. And it gives me back just 100. And instead, if I put um, a limit of 250, it will give me an internal error, of course, because it must be integer. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. See, this is the problem. Uh, every uh, request argument, as if every parameter that you give to the URL is a string. So now, right here, I just need to pass the int uh, method, which is going to turn this into a number. So now, control C, again, now it should work. And it does, 250 matches. So this is another solution. However, I am not going to do that. Because as I said, I like what I've done before, and I think it makes more sense. You hit, you make a request to the, to the route, it returns everything. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it out. If you make a request here, you get the entire list. Okay, perfect. I think it works fine. And after all, we don't even have a lot of lines of code. I mean, this is a very simple API, but man, super effective. I want to see some verbs. Let's make a song. Uh, GH. Oh yeah, laugh, nay, outweigh, overslap, overweigh, plow, rough, sigh. Slav. So, well, this is already a song. All right. This was fun. I had fun. I hope that you had fun. And honestly, I hope that my friend will become a star. I'm going to be rich. Now, as you saw, this API is extremely basic, extremely easy, but honestly, it's also extremely fun, at least for me. In my opinion, backend development it is extremely satisfying. Now, one way you could improve this is actually to implement a database. So provide a database instead of using the TXT files and opening them in the server, in the script, you should actually create a, an API using either SQL or non-SQL, usually using Python. SQL is easier because there are so many APIs helping you with that. SQLite is one. My SQL connector is another one, but you choose. In this way, you would be able to create an API as it is meant to be. And I put air quote because there is no right or wrong. But the fact is that APIs are usually used as means or mediums to communicate with the database. So exchanging or reading data from a database through the server. But anyway, this project is so simple that you can even leave it like this. It's a huge improvement and a huge step for your portfolio. All right, so I think this is the conclusion with these two episodes building APIs. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and leave a comment to let me know what do you think about APIs. Let me know what a good project would be for you to see developed on this channel. Also, make sure to subscribe not to miss a single episode. In the next episode of this series, I'm going to actually use external APIs and I'm going to start a mixing the two things, so front-end and back-end, which is the fundamentals for full-start development. All right, so this being said, once again, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. As always, stay tuned for more, and bye-bye.